Welcome back to another episode of Mathematics in Life. I'm your host, Rob Valina, and today we're going to talk about how mathematics can be used in your game of golf. For, others, for you people like me, golf is kind of hard. I can't, I can't help it. I'm not that good myself. I only shoot 90s. But today, we have the help of Jimmy Abrams, who will help us show how you can improve your golf game using mathematics. So stay tuned for another exciting episode of Mathematics in Your Life. In order to show you all the technicalities that are involved in a golf swing, the easiest way would be to show you in person. Our friend Dave is here today to show us a proper swing. And no better place to do it than at the golf range. First, let's go over the proper stands for an iron shot. For a nice shot with any iron, it is very important for you to both bend your knees and bend your back. The proper golf stance when addressing the ball is approximately bending your knees 160 to 165 degrees and your back 145 degrees. You should keep the stance both before and during your swing for maximum distance and good height for the ball. When you first address the ball, it is also a good idea to keep your arms straight towards the ball to create an isosceles triangle. Every swing, whether it is a driver, iron, or wedge, is based on a 360 degree circle. Your club head should follow along with this circle for approximately 330 degrees on your back swing, and you should complete the circle with an extra 20 degrees in your forward swing from the point of your back swing. What you should also keep in mind is that the further back you take the club, the more bend you should have in your wrist. You shouldn't bend your wrist more than 160 degrees, or have less than an 80 degree angle between your arms and the club. Using your driver, for the most part, consists of the same methods used for irons. There are only a few differences. First off, the longer the club is, the longer the ball goes, from wedges to drivers. But in order to get that distance, you also have to open or widen your feet in your stance for longer clubs. Each club varies for how wide your feet should be from each other. In order to achieve proper height for the ball, you need to also move the ball further towards your front foot for a driver. It is important to keep your body and feet perpendicular to the imaginary line of your swing. Next up is a wedge shot. The purpose of wedge clubs is for short shots with much arc to obtain spin on the ball. And in order to do that, you need much angle on the club. To control the height of your shots, it all depends on your stands according to the ball. For a shot with less height and more distance, you can move the ball back further towards your right foot, if you are right. This lessens the angle of the club, and in order to attain more height and less distance, then you would have to move the ball further toward your left foot, again if you were righty. Other tricks can be done to enhance your shot, such as individual foot position. And finally, on to putting. Putting, along with driver, wedge, and iron shots, also follows along a 360 degree circle. It is still very different though because putting should only evolve about 90 degrees of the circle, 45 degrees for your backswing and 45 degrees for your forward swing. Your arms during putting, along with your putter, act like a pendulum as you swing, creating a parabola with the ball as your vertex. In order to show you some of the most common mistakes, we brought along someone special. This is Bob. As you can see, he doesn't get out to play all that often. By watching him swing, he shows us the perfect way of how not to swing. With improper angles and the wrong stands, it can make golf quite a challenge. So as you can see, when you really break it down, golf is all about mathematics. It deals with many geometric shapes and angles. It is up to you to master each concept in order to become a good golfer like Dave. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the green.